And Dr. Mann, before you go on, I'm also thinking about in looking at this graph, let's say the first third is a woman anywhere from, I don't know, 15 to 35. Yes. But I feel like as more of us sort of advance into our perimenopausal years, we're looking back on the start of this and concluding in many cases that we may have started earlier, years earlier than we remember our first symptom to be. Absolutely. And so not to suggest that women should be assuming they're in perimenopause by the time they're 39, but I think one of the reasons your work is so impactful and what we're doing here is so helpful is that we're letting women know that things can be sort of, you know, in your landscape sooner than you think. So absolutely. Just tell us a little bit about, again, kind of how long this transition may last and yeah. how you know you've started. Yeah, so the transition can last up to 10 years. So there can be very subtle changes. There could be dramatic changes. Why does it happen worse for some women than another? You know, we don't know the answer exactly to it. It's probably a mix of genetics, you know, hereditary factors. Um, it could also be a mix of other stresses in your life, whether it's chronic medical stresses, whether it's psychological stresses, you know, other things going on that can impact our hormones and how we're feeling. Um, and I'm going to touch and I'm going to show you some pictures of like fibroids and, you know, adenomyosis and endometriosis because all of those things come to play. I, I flip back to this picture because I just wanted to kind of just um, bring you back to this, this lining picture. Okay. And I want everyone to picture the lining. It's kind of like a lawn, um, right. It's been nice and trimmed down and then it grows and then it gets trimmed down again. Right. Um, so I want you to imagine, imagine if you didn't ovulate. So this little middle line here. Okay. And imagine this line gets pushed out a little bit, meaning the estrogen keeps on being produced. You just, you never get that LH surge. You, you never get, you know, that signal for the estrogen to dip a little bit and for the progesterone to take over. Understanding progesterone's job is to say to the endometrial lining, okay, you've grown enough. I need you to start to mature and get prepared for maybe a pregnancy, right? So it helps kind of with the unchecked growth that the estrogen is causing on the lining. So you can imagine if you just keep on having estrogen produced and you're not getting ovulation and you're not getting progesterone, that lining can get kind of thickened, right? Mm -hmm. And you may not get a period because you haven't had the progesterone and all those signals. So you can get kind of a thickened lining and your periods could start to be delayed where you're not getting a period for six weeks or eight weeks. And then finally, when you bleed, you bleed a lot. Yeah. You know? Or what happens is the lining gets thickened, builds up, builds up, and you never actually get that signal for a period. So you have like some, the lining just becomes very unstable and you'll have like some spotting and then that'll last a couple of days. And then two weeks later, you'll finally have a bleed and it'll be really heavy. Um, the opposite can also happen where the estrogen is just you know, it's getting, you know, produced, but there's the thing about these little ovaries is they're getting a little tired, right? The closer you get to menopause. So this little hormone FSH is telling your ovaries, Hey, you make some estrogen, but the ovaries are like, oh, I'm trying <laughs> and, and the estrogen is low. And so you don't get much of a period because you never produce like that much estrogen. And that's when women in perimenopause on some cycles, they haven't had a lot of estrogen production because the ovaries are kind of, you know, not doing their job that month. And that's when some months they'll have like hot flashes and night sweats. Uh, and that could happen for a bit of time. And guess what? Then the next couple cycles, you could have regular or it can go what we said prior, where you have a lot of estrogen. So that's why the symptoms can be so erratic. But I wanted women to kind of understand. Like, it's fascinating and so helpful. I'm so glad you brought this today. And while you queue up to your next, I just want to yeah. let people know, I see questions coming in. I am going to get to every one of them. I just want to give yeah. Dr. Ben a chance to walk us through this. Yeah. So really, really quick here. So, you know, people are like, well, what's happening with my hormones? And it's, it is a transition, right? So 
you know, we've broken it down into like late reproductive, meaning this is like the early parts of perimenopause. Your cycles are still regular. See, I'm looking at each of these boxes. They're slightly irregular. The epigenetic is still kind of normal, but the ovarian reserve is low, meaning those, you know, those ovaries are, they're not, they're not doing a great job pumping out the estrogen. Right. Then you go into this early perimenopausal transition. The cycle lengths start to change. They may not be every 28 days. They may be every 40 days. The FSH really starts to vary. So it's not reliable. And then we get closer and closer to menopause. So your cycles are more than 60 days apart. Mm -hmm. You know, FSH gets higher and higher. And then finally, you know, we get into that early menopause where periods stop. The FSH is high. Ovarian reserve is very low, meaning estrogen levels are very low. And so this is kind of our scientific, um, you know, way we, we talk about it. Um, and you mentioned about blood tests. And we're always telling patients who ask us, well, don't you need to check my hormones so you know where I am? And I just told you, it's so unreliable, right? So we really need to listen to women and what they're telling us. Um, and here's just one, you know, proposed way of like thinking about it. And, you know, I use this loosely. So here's like nine really common symptoms. So a new onset of heavier, longer flow, your periods are shorter, you know, or they can be longer um, and a lot of common symptoms, sore, swollen, lumpy breasts. You're waking up in the middle of the night or having sleep problems, maybe more cramping, maybe some night sweats, especially right before you get your period new headaches we're going to talk about mood swings bloating and weight changes even though you're still eating well right. in your same exercise so this is what we're looking we're looking at a constellation perimenopause is a clinical diagnosis not a laboratory one 